Here we go again in the John and Gene show, Mafia Unveiled. We got a good show on today. You know, guys know I had Latin Kings on before. I had a friend of mine, Chuck, that was on. I always sound, I always send a shout out to Chuck. You know, we stay real, real tight with each other, close with his kids. And uh, anyway, here we go. We got a new guy on. I want to introduce him, Berto. Say hello to everybody. And uh, we'll, hey, uh, what's going on? What's going on to the fellas? Thank you for having me on. Yes, uh, to man. your viewers. Yes, uh, it's good to, to have viewers, you on. Uh, uh, yeah, nice to nice to be over here. Nice to be on this show with you fellas. Yes. Now, uh, you were a Latin king, correct? Yes, yes, I was. I was. Uh, I was actually a king from from Milwaukee. Um, so Milwaukee's probably about an hour hour fifteen away from Chicago. So pretty much everything that is in Chicago finds its way to trickulate up to Milwaukee. Yeah, right. So Chicago's the real Latin king because I was locked up with the New York ones. They were all fucking junkies and. Clowns. So I know I was with the Chicago ones, and they were real deal. They were all killers and tough guys, and not doing drugs. But the New York ones were fucking. <laughs> yeah. But I knew a couple of good guys. I knew uh, Re yeah. Revenge was from uh, yeah, East New York, Brooklyn. No I, well, I'm talking time. about years yeah, ago. Yeah. These guys grew up. They, they were, were fucking, they were, they were good guys. They were They got three teeth in their mouth. Yeah. I swear to God. Yeah, it's all. You know what's funny? You know what's funny, mm -hmm. bro? Uh, you know what's funny is that the the New York Kings were actually started. They were founded by uh, that guy named King Blood, and he was actually on bad terms when he left Chicago, he was a junkie, you right. know what I mean? And he, he came to New York and he started that chapter over there and it blew up. But yeah. I mean, so that kind of is, is a testament to what you're well, saying about them the guys big, being, yeah, the big you know, Latin and, and, the big, the big Latin King set now is black mob. I'm sure you heard of it. That's what's big in New York right now. That's yes. like the big, Hey Bert, how old are you now, man? I'm 36, man. Okay. 36 of them. All right. So people, and let, and let me ask you something. How did you, were you born in that life with people around in your family before that? Or you jumped in as just a yeah. teenager hanging around? Yeah, so so when I was growing up, man, I grew up, you know, your typical story, man, you know, house of dysfunction. Um, I grew up in an urban area, so my older cousin was a Latin king. Um, my second oldest brother was a Latin king. And right. so, yeah, I kind of grew up around it. You know what I'm saying? I grew up in the neighborhoods, and then obviously once you get a certain age, you kind of got to make a choice, you know? And yeah. so um, I, was, I, I actually became a king when I was 13, bro. I was probably one of the youngest dudes. Um, that made it to my chapter. What'd you have to do to turn king at the time? So, it, uh, you know, contrary to what a lot of people think, there's not really, you're not really sent on missions, you right. know what I mean, anymore. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's more of a, like, for me, I had to take a violation to get in. Okay. Um, it's a three-minute violation. Yeah. Um, but, but obviously, there's like a probationary period where they're going to watch you and they're going to they're gonna monitor how you move and all those things. So, um it's really about how you carry yourself, bro. You know, it's not, it's not necessarily any one act. It's, it's an everyday lifestyle. You know what I mean? And so when you show that you can, you can move accordingly, then, you know, it's, it's similar to somebody vouching for you, somebody putting you up and then, and then they putting you in a circle and everybody voting on it. Right. Hey, would you hang around 12th and mineral? Oh yeah. I know. See 12th and mineral is one of the old school chapters. That's Chicago. That's one of the, that's one of the big, that was probably the biggest chapter in Milwaukee. Um, right. but yeah. I wasn't from there. I was actually from 19th and Lincoln. Yeah, the guy that's from 19th and Lincoln. The, the guy running our board, Eric, he'll be on. He did a lot of time. He's been in juvie forever. He's, he's been in and out of jail since he was a kid. Oh. So he's from there. That's why he has, he used to hang there. Right. So. And, um, yeah, I funny would... story is, is it's actually Chicago, um, was the original chapter. They got indicted in 98. And so in 98, after that happened, you know, it's like roaches, man, everybody scattered. And that's how, that's how these other chapters ended up opening up. And that's how. Where I'm from, is, blood, is bloodline was actually is the bloodline chapter? Is that Chicago too? The bloodline, no, bloodline. That's all East Coast. Oh, that's, that's East, Coast? East Coast. Okay, because I was locked up with a guy named Speedy. Um, um, did you ever hear of him out of Chicago? Okay, yeah. See, so Speedy. Okay, so uh, let me let me make a distinction. So bloodline is is uh, it's an actual chapter in the East Coast of New York, right. but. Um, they have, they have like, like how I just said, I was from 19th street. I was from one nine. So that's probably similar in Chicago where they have certain areas and they're called certain things, just like little village, right. you know, Kings that are from, from 26th street, the little village. So yeah, the guy speedy, I was actually with his, his number one. Okay. And, uh, and he was actually, he was actually the regional Inca guy right. named Pac-Man, um, had a lot of juice, man. He was, uh, they were dangerous was, out there, man. He was man. one of the top head yes. They were really oh, yeah, dangerous man. out were, there. They were, uh, 
I mean, they were shooting each other yeah, with choppers. Were they were fucking, out. yeah, they were, they were shooting each other with AK 47s yeah. in the middle of the street, bro. They like, yeah. and we're gonna go to our sponsor now. Uh, we sponsored by Full Service Auto Transport. Full service. We do specialize in car, uh, motorcycles, heavy equipment. We op- open and close transport. We ship nationwide and five star rated all over the place. If you need anything for, for free, check us out at fullserviceautotransport.com or call Rob directly at 561 414 6096. Thank you, everybody. Let's get back to our show. Hey, Bert, and, and Berto, I want people to know where you came in, you know, that, you know, we're not talking to just anybody. So I want to, what were you charged with when you, when you got indicted and charged? What were you charged with? Yeah, so, so here, I'll go, I'll give in a little bit, you know, like I said, I became in when I was 13, right? And so, obviously, you know, you don't last long on the street when you're in this life, man. That's how we right. always try to push people away from the bullshit. Um, so by 15, I caught my first shooting case. I actually, I shot a guy in the neck. First degree reckless endangerment safety. I went and did uh, two years as a juvenile, and um, and then when I got out, I was out for probably a total of about three months, bro. And um, and I actually got indicted at 18. I, I turned 18 in August. I got indicted in October, and they charged me with RICO, the enterprise, continuing to come enterprise. I had two murders and three attempts on my indictment. Right. Yeah. Well, that's all you got charged with. But I ain't gonna talk about what else you got accused of. And uh, I know guys that familiar with you and uh so i know you're a very dangerous guy and uh so does and you had a family that was also known to be very dangerous so and you're, you're a gentleman so that's the thing i'm gonna tell what people are listening to because this is you know we have a message behind the bullshit that everybody talks about on the street they don't see the bad end of it and, and i'm always talking against the street because i want real serious guys like yourself to you know to, that message is the same as my message is you know Forget the streets. Yeah, you know, yeah, enjoy 100%, your life. A hundred percent. Yeah, a hundred percent. And like, like what else, John? See, I like to, I listen to your guys' show a lot, man. I like to draw parallels, you know, um, between the two different lifestyles. And obviously they're similar in so many ways. They're different in a lot of ways. But one of the biggest things like uh, that, that goes on with the, with the Kings and, and street gangs in general, I won't, I won't single out Latin Kings. Obviously that's what I was. So that's, that's where I'm, I'm familiar with, but I know these, all these gangs, man, they prey on kids and, and uh, the, the main thing is the hypocrisy, bro. You know, if, if people came in and they understood what, was, what they were really signing on for, right. you know, these, these, these gangs would be skeletons. You You're know right. what I mean? It, there's no way people would sign on to it, bro. I actually did, it's funny, I did a, um, you know, for my own, my own uh, peace of mind, I did what I like to, I did like a little application, right? And, and it's, it's, a, it's a fake application, but what, what you would hand a, pr- a prospect, Right. And on this on this paper, you're asking questions basically to the prospect if they're willing to accept these questions. One being, OK, let's just let's just let's just bring up the biggest one. Right. Are you willing to to sign on to this gang knowing that there's a high chance that your friends are going to cooperate against you? Right. That right there is going to push a lot of people out the door. Right. You got other ones. You got other ones like, OK, um, knowing that you're going to sign on to this gang. Are you willing and OK with your fellow members hitting on your wife? trying to sleep with your girlfriend, trying to sleep with your kid's mother. Or kill you. You know, so, or kill you, right? <laughs> so these are all the things that, you know, everybody kind of, they, they they sweep under the rug, you know, until you're put into a situation. You know what I mean? And, and um, Well, in the mafia, man, think, in the mafia, one of the questions is, are you willing to take orders from a guy that never cracked an egg, never shot nobody, killed nobody, right. never did no work, don't fist fight with nobody, never... Right. Never did shit, but he's he's your boss right. now. Yeah. Are you willing to, to, right. to, because then you'll throw out 90% of the guys because they never did anything. Right. Right, 100%, 100%. And, and, and I agree with that because that's that's also uh, relevant in, in uh, you know, in the street gang life. It's the same thing, you know, like uh, sometimes it's a matter of circumstance. These guys get spots based on this guy getting locked up or that guy getting locked up. Doesn't mean they deserve it. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, it just means that they were in the right place at the right time. You know, and so um, that's 100 percent, man. That's that's one of the biggest quarrels you have, especially as a young guy, is because you dedicate your life to this shit, thinking that it's 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 what it's supposed to be. And then you get to a point and you start realizing all these older guys, they're not in the street like you. You yeah. know, they're not out here putting in work like you. Yeah. And it's like, where's their sacrifice? You right. know what I mean? And then before you know it, you're knee deep in shit. And the guys you thought were going to stand up, they don't, you know, and, and now you paint it into a corner. Hey, you know what? You know what the young guys don't understand is like when you were 15, you got caught for your first shooting, you did, and you did a couple of years in juvie. 
You didn't get to play on a baseball team. You didn't get to go to the beach in the pool. You didn't get to play around right. as a youngster with a girl, and you didn't get any of that. You right. cheated yourself out of that, and you can never recover it back. So when these young right. kids think it's cool, they, they miss out on so many good things. You know, even school, like, you know, it sounds corny. You go to the prom, and you go to the prom junior prom dance and all that. We, you know, we oh, ruin that for ourselves. Yeah. And, you know, and, yep. and these young kids, they don't get the idea of, you know, you don't get paid to, 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 to fuck up your life. You're not in a boxing ring where you're getting paid big money if, you, if you're good at it. You know, for the fighters ain't good, you're struggling. But for the, the guys fighting, so you just cheated yourself out of a whole slew of, of good times, just going to the movies with a bunch of kids and laughing. Instead, your life's too right. serious because once you you know once you put that first piece of work in at fifteen, now you got to carry it. you got to carry always because yeah. people know you're dangerous. Yeah, they're not gonna come look to right. fist fight you. They're gonna look to kill you now. Right. Were you ever in any? Right. Uh, once you put that jacket on, once you put that jacket on, you gotta wear it. Let me yeah. go ahead, Gene. Sorry about were, that. Were you ever in any state prisons out in Wisconsin and Chicago, like you know, uh, gang banging in jail? Because you know that's where all the violence really goes down for the gangs. You know. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of, well, you got to remember, I got indicted when I was 18, oh, just okay. turned 18, All right, so yeah, I, because... I never made it to the state joint, I went straight right. to the feds, man, okay. graduated right to college. Well, man. yeah, that's what I'm saying, you know, so there's a lot of politics, you know how it goes, people getting ran off yards for anything, you know, it's people getting stabbed up, you know, literally, you know, all over, so I'm saying, uh, jail interactions, were you uh, getting into a lot of shit in prison? Yeah, so when I was, I was in the juke, so... I mean, if, I'm sure you guys been locked up a lot too. When you're in juvenile, I mean, that's the gladiator school. Of course, you know that's that's yeah. that's where you're taught. You know, what I mean, the guy so, running a, a, a board, Eric, is did a ton of time in juvie. He was in yeah. Wales. He yeah. was in Wales. So you that's know, where you I was know. at. Yeah, yeah, I was in Wales for two years. Yep, I was in Wales for two years, man. I was in yeah. I was in uh, Draper, which was the gang unit. I was yeah. in the gang unit for, you know, what I'm saying I. I was in there, man. We were. I was holding it down. I had the spot in there, so I was actually holding the house right. where I was at, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and so the good thing, bro, I mean, not good thing. I, it's probably a bad way to say it. But I, the one thing about us that I can say when I was that part of that is we were structured. We were organized. And so um, from the street to the joint, we always had communications. And so my brother would always come and communicate everything that I needed to know as far as, you know, even rivals that were coming to the joint, you know. And obviously when they came up there, we'd have something ready for who, them. Who so is yeah, your biggest always... rivals in Chicago? It was the Latin King Kill. Well, they called the Killers or something like that, the L. The LK killers, or something like that. I remember him hearing it when I was. No, that's kids. just that's a general term. That's a general oh. term for everybody that hates kings, right? They oh, say okay. KK or King Killer. Yeah. But like for us in Milwaukee, bro, our our biggest rival probably was the Spanish Cobras. Yes. Um, okay. And, that's, and I say yes, that, I, heard that I say that because yeah, I say that because they were probably the ones that gave us the most trouble. Right. You know, like killing each other all over. Yes, I remember them friend. telling me. Right. That. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Yep, okay. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Hey, how many years did you spend away in juvie and feds and this and that? Yeah, I did a total of about 17 and a half years, bro, and, and yeah, I'm 36. Man. Yeah, so I know. You, that, but that I, I, yeah, you know, the reason why I asked is because I knew you did close to 20 years. Yeah. And I just want to show yeah. people, like, man, first off, you're very intelligent. And anybody that's listening, you, and you're very well-spoken, and you're a gentleman. And so the guys that don't know, usually the tough guys like yourself, honestly, and I know you don't call yourself that, but me and you know each other pretty well are always the gentlemen that speak the way you do. And you also got a message, which I, I really respect to tell kids don't do it because you wasted half your life since you were a kid in prison. So my next question right. is to you, I know you were in a lot of joints. Were you in there with any mob guys and what do you think of whatever mob guys you were in there with? Yeah, so I mean, I was in there with a lot of mob guys, bro. A lot of wannabe mob guys. Um, I guess the most, the most famous most notoriety is is none other than your pal sammy oh you gotta um, tell sammy me about that I, now now i hit sammy. the jackpot i want it here oh, i want to hear it i want to hear the truth because you talk you say it raw so i want to hear it real go ahead yeah so so i met sammy man and uh I, you know when i met him i didn't even know who he was i you know not even talking shit, but the guy looked like Smeagol from Lord of the Rings. I had no idea, you know. And this is <laughs> I like, love that. This is, hey, this is like the, uh, you know, like they put him on the scale. I mean, let's just call it what it is. You right. know, Sammy the Bull this, Sammy the Bull that. And so, you know, when I met the guy, I was looking for the prestige and the and and to me, honestly, bro, which is dirt ball right. uh, vibes, just right. immediately, just dirt ball vibes and. and and I distanced myself from guys like that. But unfortunately, you know, when you're in prison, man, you're always gonna you're always gonna run into guys, man. You can't really you can't really avoid them. Right. And so I, I actually got a funny story um, I'll share with you about with Sammy, right? So yeah. Sammy, man, he was kind of a in there. 
I mean, obviously out here, he, I guess it kind of looks like he's got a little bit of money, takes care of himself. But in there, he was kind of like a two-bit hustler, bro. Like, right. he didn't have shit, you know. And, and not saying I did. Right. You know, I was hustling too. But but I know the persona he likes to play off. And, and right. um, so in there, he had a card table, right? And yeah. um, and it was like probably five guys that used to go and sit. sit and he'd make like setups for like 60 cents, bro. It was what we call the little guy table, right? right. <laughs> and so... Uh, and so he'd play there and he had like a couple guys that would consistently show up and, and you know, not, no biggie. Right. And so I, obviously I see the market and I always had my hand in gambling in prison. It's just cause I right. supported myself. I never liked to ask my family for nothing. And so, um, when I seen the market for a poker table, you know, I came and I upgraded, I made it a real table. You know, I made sure that I brought, you know, you bring new cards, you bring snacks to the table, right. you know, you just, you, you put money back into the table and, and, and it'll make money. And so that's what I did. And I had a full house right. all the time. Nine guys at the table playing hold them every right. night. Right. Right. And so even the guys from Sammy's table, they start trickling away from them, you know, and they right. start coming over to my table and, um, you know, I'm not asking nobody. I'm not recruiting. I'm just holding a game. Right. And so, and so the guy, Sammy comes to me one day. Right. And he's like, Hey, listen, he's like, I see you got the table. He's like, it's doing good. You know, he's, he's talking to him on my table, right? And I'm right. just entertaining it. Like, okay. And he goes, he goes, listen, this is what I think we should do. Um, I'll take Tuesdays and Thursdays and you can have the rest of the days. Yeah. And I kind of looked at him and I'm like, I'm like, Sammy, what the fuck are you talking about? And he goes, yeah, we'll just split the table. He's like, I, I, my guys are going to go to your table. I said, bro, I don't need your guys. Like, you're yeah. not having none of my table. Right. And he goes, he goes, he goes. Oh, he goes, it's like that. I said, you're fucking right. It's like that. I said, who are you? You think you're going to push up on me, bro? I said, come on, Sam, you're 70 plus years old, bro. Yeah. Like, and you know, at this time I'm probably, I'm probably in my twenties, bro. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like right, early twenties, right. like, what, what do you want to do? Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and he just looked at me, he goes, it's like that. I said, yeah, it's like that, bro. I don't, yeah, you know, yeah. and he walked away from me and he had a sour taste in his mouth, but yeah. I never really, you know, I never really vibed with a lot of shit that he was doing, man. He would try to like, uh, push up on like I know you know like the Flores twins you know I was right, there right, right. I know them good and, I know them, and, I know them and, really good and, and that right and that's a good friend of mine you know what I'm saying and yeah. so um out of the kindness of his heart when Sammy came in because he knew Sammy from another place he let Sammy sell up with him you right. know what I mean he didn't have to do that right but then this guy man he'd be trying to push up on him like you know not not I don't want to say extort him because because Pedro's not a weak guy right. you know what I'm saying in that sense but at the same time you know, he's trying to push him up on him, make, get money from him. And, and, you know, it's, it was a joke. And, and I had to tell him one day, like, bro, like, you know, back up off the guy, you know what I'm saying? Back up off him. And, and he didn't ask me to do that. Right. You know, he didn't ask me, but, but if you're my friend, you know, and I feel like you're being taken advantage of, I'm never going to allow that to happen. You know what I mean? Like yeah, if we're yeah. friends, we're friends, Yeah. you know? And so, and, and so that created a problem. They ended up, they ended up, uh, a, a splitting sales up and, and yeah. so, yeah, bro, that's the kind of dude that, that Sammy is. So when I hear your stories about him, yeah. I know Gene's got a soft spot for him, but, <laughs> but, but, you know, but I, but I seen it, you know, I seen it firsthand, man. I seen what kind of guy he was, you know what I mean? And, 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 and not that he owed anything to me as a person, but just when you're a man, bro, and you carry yourself like a man, you know, you get respect. You, you don't, you don't, you don't get that without earning it you right. know i don't care about your name bro you right. know what i'm saying i don't i don't care about your name you know i know the truth behind the, the 19 murder thing and, and all that i know the truth you yeah know, you know it's one I, I had more. I, yeah, yeah yeah you know yeah, what i'm saying so so well because you're 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 you're, you're because you're, you're you're like me man you're a real shooter and you're a real guy on the street and you're a gentleman so you, you ain't impressed with nobody's bullshit you don't care about that title and for the people who don't know right. who the flores brothers are the other brother was with me and, yeah, and, and 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 uh, they're gentlemen, Another and, good guy. and they're guys. Yeah, good guy. So people don't know they were guys who were involved with, in, with the cartel in Mexico. Serious guys. El Chapo. Yeah, with Chapo, Chapo and those, and, and and they're gentlemen. So when when I hear these stories from you, the next guy, and what Sammy don't get is he's too stupid to get. We all know each other, and we all talk to each other, and we all respect one thing about each other: we were real when we're out there, and we're real now. We give a good message to kids. As far as right, he's con right. I'm concerned with him, and Gene just recently, I'm going to put Gene on. He asked me, you know, because Sammy wanted to make up with me and just lay it off. And I, you know what my answer was? No, fuck no, never. You know, because he's got a reputation to be a piece of shit for a long time. I like his, his daughter's a nice girl. I got along with friends with her, and I feel bad for that part, but he ain't never going to change. Everybody in his path, he's always fucked. And everybody that tries to be nice to him, he fucks. So there's no, there's no yeah. upside to be the guy because that's his personality for 80 years. It ain't going to change in year 81. So, you know, for me, right. I ain't got nothing good to say. I'll never have something good to say, and he can go fuck himself. 
So when I hear stories right. from you and the next guy, I love to hear them. <laughs> I got to tell you. Yeah, hundred percent. And and even like on his on his on his uh, platform, man, I heard him. Yeah, I seen like one of his shorts where he he was telling a story about how he almost beat up P in the visiting room um, because Karen got into it with his wife. Right. And and I and and it's a joke, bro. Like that never happened. Like you you know, it's like one thing, bro. You want to create drama, and, but don't just make up a story. And, and like I don't even on my platform, bro. I don't go and try to bash people individually right. but i'll bash your actions you know yeah. i'll bash your actions mm. because you know ultimately that's what that's what's going to dictate your character you know what, what i mean well like, his, his nickname was sammy the bullshit artist and that's true fat sal grew up with him <laughs> and he knows him and he changed it to sammy the bull but just what you're saying that's why listen he did a whole 45 minutes about i'm the toughest guy around and then he turned around and tried to say he, that he only did it you know, because he wanted to be nice to me because I helped him out and lent him 3000 So that shows you his personality. That he's that much of a bullshit artist to say something as stupid as that. And I said, well, if he really did do that, then you know he's a hooker for fucking $10. So, you know, he's too right. dumb. Either way, he can't win with that kind of explanation. But, you know, we, right. like, you know, like I know, we all know who's real and what's real, and we know each other between all our friends from the same areas and, and, you know, mutual friends in prisons and this and that. We know who's, what's up. Yeah, I got along with the Chicago right. Latin Kings. I couldn't stand the New York Latin Kings. So I definitely got along with all the Chicago. I was with a lot of Chicago. And also, um, there was also ones out of um, uh, Indianapolis. Indianapolis. Indy, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so there's a, there's a, there's a, like a really, really close to the border right there, bro. Right, right. Um, like there's a hood right there. I think it's like 99th. And uh, I think that's where Speedy was from. He was either from 99th or 89th. Right. And so they're really, really close to that Indiana border, you know. And so, you know, there's there's a chapter over there called Waco, and they're kind of like interchangeable. You know, they go back and forth. And so I know exactly what you're talking about. And those are, yeah, you're right, man. A lot of, lot of good guys over there, man. You know, guys get put in unfortunate situations, bro. And it's like, you know, unfortunately in this street life, bro, you know, it's, it's it, it, you know, there's there, there's no small – there's no small sentences, right? You know, when when Not you make the Rico. decisions that we make. Not with Rico, right? Especially when make, exactly when they learn exactly. Rico, so then you, you can shoot it. somebody in the ass get 20 years on a Rico case. You know what I'm saying? It's and, a lot and, 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 and you know something you know already because you did it as a young guy. It's easy to maneuver young kids to be yeah. to because when all the action is usually when you're younger. I mean, as you get older, I tell the same thing constantly. You know, guys get older, right. get a little more mellow. They they respect life a little bit more. They don't want to take the chances because they got families. So they're not as violent. But young kids, man, they're all gun ho They're ready to go. And especially oh, yeah. when you soup them up, put a battery pack in them. It's easy to get That's them to right. do 100%. what you did. Right now, 16-year-old kids are all murderers in New York yeah. right now. The Bronx got a bunch of 16-year-old yeah. kids shooting people right now. 15. Yeah. Right, yeah. right, 100%. And it's not, it's not, you know, it's not that... Um, kids don't understand right from wrong, bro. Because I never, I never use that as a, as a, as a scapegoat. But you don't know the gravity of what you're doing. Like right. you might know right from wrong, bro. But you don't know, you don't know the gravity of what you're doing. How serious that shit really is, you know. And and um, I think that's the main thing, bro. That I always try to preach. And I hate to use that word, but it's serious. I always try to, I always try to say, hey, listen, man. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try to convince you not to do it. I'm just going to give you the facts about that organization and you can decide, what, you know, because that's the biggest thing, bro. Do you, got, you have the facts? Yeah. I don't mean to cut you off, bro. You, you got no, no, go children ahead, go. that live with you now. I got a son that's in jail coming home in, in two months. And, you know, and I used to try to tell him all the time, man, don't do it, man. I ruined my life, you know, because you're never going to be able to shoot all the people that got big mouths. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> right. And, you know, no, yeah, <laughs> you, you just can't do it. And so, you know, you right. gotta, you gotta learn to walk away from it and just say, I know what I'll do to them. Right. I just don't want to ruin my right. life. But as a father, right. you know, you want to say to kids and or other people's kids, you know, just what you said, here's the facts. We're going to give you some facts and hopefully you take right. what I tell you and, and, and run with it so you don't ruin your life. So you go in the right direction, not the wrong direction. All right. So I don't want to darken the mood of the show, man, but I like to, I like to lead with honesty. And so, you know, I actually had my first son when I was 14, turning 15. So right, right before I went in as a juvenile, um, my son, my, my oldest son turned one. Right. And right. so um, I, I did, like I said, I did a total of two years mm -hmm. so I, as a juvenile. So I did 18 months and I was out for about, three weeks in a, in like a group home and I violated. Right. But during that three weeks, I got my same kid's mom pregnant with my second son. So I ended up with two sons, um, 
And literally when I got indicted, my second son was only two months. And so this is the reality uh, that, that people need to hear too, is that I lost her whole life. Right. You know, I went and did 15 years. I lost her whole life. You know, my, my, my oldest son, when I went in, he was three. And then, like I said, my youngest was two months and I lost her whole life. Yeah. You know, so, um, I mean, that's the harsh reality, bro. You yeah, know, that's and, the sad and, part and, of it's right. Yep. Right. And, and, you know, unfortunately I, I, I'm blessed that, you know, neither one of them are, are affiliated with what I was affiliated with, but that right. doesn't, that doesn't mean that they didn't grow up, you know, in the slums, you know, they didn't grow up in a lifestyle that I wouldn't have chose for them. Right. You know what I mean? But I wasn't there. And so, um, that's, that's probably the biggest takeaway is listen, man, I was taken away and now, you know, they're a product of their environment as well. You know, thankfully they haven't done time like I have. You know, my oldest son is 21. He'll be 22 in May. And then I got a younger son who's 18 now. And so thankfully they're not, you know, they're, they're obviously they've, they've done the, you know, the in and out stints that, that most people do when you right. grow up in those areas. But, yep. but thankfully they, they didn't, they didn't do what we did. Yeah. You know, they didn't go away for the, for those yeah. chunks. Yeah. 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 It's true. Yeah. Hey man, you know, honestly is a great message and, yeah. uh, I'm, you know, I'm gonna let oh, you go. Hopefully, well. hopefully, we can, you know, we'll come on your show, and you know, you for the people who know that you, you got a podcast, and yeah. uh, we'd like to do something. And, I, and and really, you know that we became friends because of the way you uh, advocate, the way you do, and it's not preaching; it's just trying to save a young kid's life, whether it's our kids or somebody else's kid, because you give the real of it, right. the truth of it, and which is important for our message. And you know, the, the, right. the, the, the stories are cool with all of us, even with us. You know, there's a lot of things that. We like the excitement of it, but we know the bottom line is just not worth that world. And, the, you know, the treachery and the deceit and the time we do and the the years we lose just is not worth it. And, and uh, you know, I'm glad you came on, man. Yeah. I really appreciate it. You know, Definitely, people. man. It was nice no, meeting I, you, man. You I talk very well, you. too. Yeah. You know, uh, you seem like a cool-ass dude, man. If you ever hey. come over here to Florida, you got to hit us up when we go out. Yeah, tell the thank twins. You, tell tell the twins what he said, what's up. You know? Yeah, tell Margarito. Yeah, he, Margarito you. Listen, Margarito used to call me Split. Remember the movie Split? Yeah. The guy with the multi, yeah, multi person. Yeah. He used to go, what yeah. a, you know, he talks, what a, what a, he split, Woody. what a, he's yeah. crazy. Cause I used to go, I, I was wild. I'm a wild guy. So I used to go crazy on people. I used to go, he's fucking split, what a, he's split. <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure. Listen, fellas, I appreciate you having me on. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, so my, my podcast is Normalized Crime, man. Anytime you, you guys want to check out them stories, you're welcome. You know what I'm saying, and and I look forward to having you guys on. I appreciate you spreading the message. Yeah, you man. know what I mean, and and uh, we'll definitely be in touch, man. I appreciate you guys. Love the show. All right, man. Thank you, brother. I'll talk to you this week. Have a good weekend too, man. Enjoy yourself. Stay safe. Take care, bro. You guys too. Take care. Take right. care, fellas. All right, man. So, uh, so you guys. I mean, that's hitting it from a real guy and a dangerous guy, and you see the way he talks. And this is why I talk about. You know the difference from big mouths. And I'm not talking about gang members. I'm talking about mob guys now. They they talk bullshit, but they ain't real. These guys are real. The guy behind our, uh, that's hand on our switchboard will be on top. He's real. He did a lot of time, too, since juvie and everything else. And we know what it is out there. That's why we're always sending a message. We could tell these stories. Everybody hope you're enjoying, but it's real life, real actions. And, uh, you know, he's a, this guy's an educated, smart, good dude, and he lost half his life. And he's lucky he's young still. So he can still, you know, have enjoy the rest of his life. Right. But he suffered a lot, lost a lot. That he ain't never gonna get back. Subscribe, hit that button if you like the shows, recommendations for other shows. Watch our lives on Instagram. Uh, our products, our bats are back. Our books. <laughs> he loves saying and, bats uh, are back. <laughs> our photos and and lectures that were, were always available to our events. We're doing you can hire us out too. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody, and, 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 and the best part of this show, and I hope you all enjoyed it, is <laughs> fuck Sammy Gravano. <laughs> Still owes me three thousand dollars, and I don't want to make up with him never. <laughs> hey, uh, also follow us on Instagram, Gene Borello, uh, Johnny A Light, and uh, DM us. I like to say Johnny, but yeah, Johnny, Johnny I, I grew up as right. Johnny. And, uh, so. That's all. Thank all right, you. guys, see ya.